So we're gonna run through a basic tutorial and try my best to help you guys out there. You know, from the serial number to the batteries to ohm test the fuses to the con uh, charger and uh, the throttle. I mean, I already got two videos like I mentioned earlier about the potentiometer inside here. I'll try and do as much as I can so you guys can get through what you need to get through. So the first place we're going to start with, you know, obviously is, like I mentioned in a previous video, can't do stuff like this. The, uh, just like the electric carts, the charger needs to plug in every time it's not in use. And any time and every time you go to do any battery change outs or mess with any electrical on this system so you don't it's no different than the electric carts where you need to unplug the quick disconnect. You need to come over here where this big gray quick disconnect is and you just pull on it and disconnect it. That's going to stop any type of surge going into you know, your electrical components. Um, I already pulled off this panel and a lot of you already know anytime you're getting flash codes, one red and one green, red, green, red, green, is an internal code error. Two red, two green, red, green, red, green is an external error. So that external would mean like your brake or your motor or transaxle, etc. Internal is obviously, you know, inside controller, fuses, whatever. You just follow the code, whatever it's flashing according to whatever's here. Whenever this is all damaged and you can't read it, can't see it, refer to your manual that we sent out to you because these same codes will be in your manual. And I highly suggest you guys get used to reading your manuals because one of the things you're really going to need to know and understand, and I myself, I'm not going to blow smoke. I'm not an electrician. I don't know the ins and the outs. I just know what we're supposed to do. So when it comes to your multimeter and knowing what your multimeter needs to be set at, you need to know your multimeter because if you call Matt at Gatekeeper, he's going to throw this out at you and say, well, set it at this, set it at that. And if you don't understand or don't know, he's going to tell you to go read the manual of your multimeter and then call him back. Because he, there's only one person that we're informed that is available for questions on these mules and that is Matt Poteet at Gatekeeper and he might answer he might not answer because he gets calls and emails all day long so the batteries and the charger can be tested and done the same way as the electric cart but our load testers and again don't forget to unplug your quick connect our load testers do not actually give you the problem or if there is actually an issue. It just gives you a quick test and you hold it for up to 10 seconds and all that shows is that it's holding a charge, that it can hold a load. So you hold it for 10 seconds and it's pushing out right now, you know, 12, 12 volts right now. The minimum cranking amps you're looking at probably an 8.9 somewhere in there and so that's holding a load well now for $200 there's these load testers that are digital those ones will actually tell you and right quick we're not going to buy those that would be up to you to buy those actual digital ones you set to what that battery is it'll tell you if a cell's broke in there it'll tell you which cell is broke in there It'll tell you everything wrong with that battery. But again, that's $200. If you want to spend that, go ahead. So we'll go ahead and test this other battery and make sure that it's holding the load. And again, you do it for, you know, up to 10 seconds. You don't want to do it too long, otherwise you'll blow this. And you can see it's holding at just below a 12 which is fine and then earlier I was uh, showing the testing of the multimeter when it comes to 
It's the charger. Now there's two different chargers, obviously, for the two different models that so far we've been working on. One time so far there's there's been a CM XD model and we've only seen one so far. If you run into a CM model, you're it's gonna be the same tests and everything, but the part numbers or anything to go with that is gonna be different. You're gonna to have to call to get the prices and the part numbers. Either call me, Willie, or uh, Tony because she has that information. But anyways, testing the charger, obviously, is the same thing as electric cards. For those that don't know, when you're testing something that's at 12 volts, obviously you can't have it set at two volts. You need to be above those 12 volts. So now we're gonna come over here and test the battery and it's holding at a 1278 for that one and this one is a 1273 so now you can do the same process and and when you're next to an outlet and plug it in and if that 1278 and 1273 starts to climb that's obviously telling you that the charger is throwing amperage to the batteries so that means the charger's good so we're going to also go over following the power, which I know a lot of you tend to not do. So if you automatically jump to the batteries, batteries are good. Then you do your multimeter and test the charger that way, and you're not getting any voltage. It's not going up in degrees on the battery or volts on the battery. We all need to learn to start with the outlet. Test the outlet. Your outlet will usually push 110 or 120, sorry. So that means you need to test the outlet and set your multimeter above 120. Stick this in the outlet and you're not gonna get electrocuted, trust me. <laughs> that I do know. And you should read anywhere from a 115, 116, 121. If you're not reading exactly a 120, that's fine. All that means is that there's other things connected to that outlet pulling power. That's why there's not 120 exactly, because it's being it's got power being pulled from it. So once you've determined that outlet is good, now you need to unplug your D cord. Now this is only on the SX model. The SX you can test it this way because the XDs, well you can do it on the XDs, I forgot. They're plugged in right here because there's an IEM connect right here. And the IEM connect is right to the charger here on the SX model. On the XDs, it's got a cord on the inside like the Amigos where it comes from there and goes into the charger on the inside of the machine. But you can should still be able to unplug it and test it the same way. So now the same way that you tested the outlet, you're gonna test this cord and make sure that there's 120 going through the cord. So plug in your cord to the wall, do the same thing here, stick these inside here and you should be getting a 120 read you know, on your multimeter. Once you've determined that you've got 120, you're following the power from the outlet through the cord to the charger. Now you've determined that you're not getting any power to your battery or volts to your battery. You've determined there's power coming from the wall through your cord to the charger. Now you can make the assumption that something's wrong with the charger because it's stopping here. That's what it means to follow the power. And that's what we all, again, that's what we all need to do. We need to follow that power through the cords and find out where it stops. Um, again, I'm trying my best here to explain all this. I'm, I'm no electrician. Um, and any questions you guys might have, uh, go ahead and, and give us a call. Uh, the other way of testing this charger, this has to be plugged in, and obviously I'm not um, near an outlet right now. I'll do another quick video on that and show you. Um, the next thing, we're d discovering that a lot of these fuses are going out. 
and the way that you test the fuses is right here on your multimeter is an ohms test all these that little horseshoe all that stuff is should be ohms right there but with that Wi-Fi looking thing that's an audible what it does is it gives off a, a sing signal or a tone I'm sorry so if you set it to that audible and my machine I got to make sure I, I set that mode to audible I'm going to carefully, and again, make sure your quick disconnect's unplugged. Just carefully give it a little twist and just pop it out of there. You're going to pull that fuse out. And you're going to touch the ends of this. And if you listen to the multimeter, you're getting a, te you're getting a tone. What that's doing is it's throwing a small current from one end through it to the other, creating or uh, closing that loop telling me that this fuse is good um, now the continuity test it's called a continuity test or an ohm test if you end up going to test any of these wires like uh, we do on the com cable for the Amigo you know this blue end to that blue end, this purple end to that purple end, and try and get that tone test. What you also need to be aware of, you're going to have to use your eyes as the visual inspect on any of these wires, especially when it comes to electric carts and that com cable and that motor harness underneath the frame when it comes loose and it gets ran over and stuff like that because wires are obviously made up of several other tiny wires wound together to make that current travel or help that current travel better as long as one of those little tiny wires is making a connection you still will get a tone so that wire still could be bad it, you're just gonna have to depend upon your eyes to determine if it's been damaged run over you're gonna use your fingers and and feel the wire and make sure that there's no damage to that wire because again all you need is, is is one wire connected and it'll still give you a tone or give you a reading on the continuity test um, one of the thing other things is uh, blah, 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 blah. if you look over here on the fuses you'll see each one of them it tells you especially when it's brand new 2 amp 5 amp 2 amp 2 amp 2 amp over there is your big dog where the bat where the main battery power comes in and the 80 amp distributes all the power to all the components of where it needs to go this right here is your controller same concept as with the amigos if you need to test wires and where they're going and stuff like that you know just follow your color code where they're going where they end up um, obviously I don't know where everything goes on this I haven't been able to get it too in depth with this um, we were told at Amigo which I'm just gonna enlighten you and you make your own determination with it this battery this particular battery in the SX model which is the only battery is this type of battery is specifically used and only put in these SX models which we were told specifically by gatekeeper we were also informed that this particular battery is synced or married to this charger and we are not to use any other battery in this but that so again, make your own determination with that. Go with what we're supposed to do, and I'll leave that at that. And the serial number he says. Um, also, it is very imperative and important, especially with a new cart like this. These carts are, or these mules are under warranty. And I explained in another video earlier about the damage along the side, about this, the stirrups hitting uh, speed bumps and stuff like that. The gatekeeper will technically call that voided warranty. But it is very important when it comes to a warranty issue and we have to replace a controller um, 
a charger, a uh, battery, whatever. I mean, it, it, I think it's more or less along the internal components. I don't think it might be the batteries or not, because batteries go dead, but um, usually of neglect, nonetheless. We need to know the make and the, the model, the serial number, obviously, Gatekeeper. This is an SX model. SX will be on the side of the hood, or XD will be on the side of the hood. Your serial number is going to be right here. Now on the XD models, they have, I've noticed first glances before where the top section was in English, there was no serial number on the line item. The bottom half was in Spanish, but the serial number was down there and technicians still called me and said, hey, where's the serial number? <laughs> well, I know it sounds stupid and whatever. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. That is the serial number. It's just they stamped it on the Spanish side. So, same thing. It's very important. Makes, models, serial numbers, store number, store address. All that information must be on your invoice. There is sales on your invoice for this. We all know this and we all still from time to time forget. Not just in the comments, it's got to be in that sale. Also, I cannot emphasize enough when we are sales ordering, our Walmart invoice does not have a sales order. It does have a particular cell right above your name on the right hand side at the top. The cell specifically says service type. So if you're doing an on call, put on call. If you're doing a warranty, put warranty. If it's a PM, whatever, put PM. If it's a sales order, please don't forget to put sales order. You have to change this stuff. We decided not to do an extra tab. It's just a nuisance, and we thought this would be easier, but it's turning out that it didn't, didn't really matter. But it's very important. Makes, models, serial numbers, store numbers, store addresses because all that information needs to be given to gatekeeper in order for us to get paid for our warranty services that's what determines everything if that information is not there we can't get paid we are instructed by gatekeeper if it's a new cart like this and it's an internal issue external issue whatever if it falls under the warranty we call to find out that information if it is a warranty, we are always instructed to do the work, fix the machine, get it done. The warranty will come after the fact and be figured out by the office. That's not your job, my job, it might be my job from time to time, but most of the time the office and the warehouse will take care of that and, and knock all that stuff out. Um, now that I think of it, I might be able to show you the testing of the charger. Don't forget, now this is my dummy moment. I literally called Matt after I put new battery in, batteries, whatever you do. I don't put in batteries all the time. I put in a battery if it needs it. Um, I don't think we need to go that far like we do with the electric carts with these because it's a different type style of charger charging these batteries. It's a different scenario so I, I firmly believe if only one battery is bad just replace that one battery. There's no need to go that far in replacing all the batteries that doesn't it's it's not that's not right I don't think that's should be done but anyways I did the fix the car the mule and everything seemed to be right and then I turned on the machine I had no power and I was just sitting here scratching my head even called Matt to try and figure out what was going on and then all of a sudden I looked down and my dumb ass forgot to plug the quick connect back in so as soon as I did that, I turned on the machine. I made Matt's day because it made him laugh extremely. And the machine worked and everything was fine. So don't forget to plug your quick connect back in. 
to me it seems very easy to forget that so this charger thing um, when you first turn on the machine this is what you know, they used to call this the antenna throttle or throttle antenna now they just call it a throttle um, potentiometer throttle this also tells you your codes if you don't have all the LEDs like you're supposed to have I mean obviously you can't properly diagnose the machine so a code is a code nonetheless no different than your cars you could end up having multiple codes you could end up having a false code which I have had just recently on a mark cart uh, in Grand Junction but if you're getting one code it doesn't necessarily mean that's the only code you might need to fix that first code in order to continue on to the next diagnostic or, or trying to process eliminate everything um, just keep that in mind but again if you don't have all your LEDs it's hard for you to go to your panel and figure things out and try and process eliminate everything so when you first turn this thing on, do not touch the handle, do not engage it, otherwise it's gonna give you a code. This thing's very touchy, just turn it on first. Watch your throttle over here. You'll have two green, or three greens, and then it should go full. I got all my LEDs, now I can go forward and reverse. You know, again, like my other video showed, just a little bit, not a lot, don't jam it. It's delicate up here. So we got power going to the machine. So what we were shown is that all these fuses on the bottom side, or all these down here on the bottom side are the ends. In other words, the power is coming in, going through, these are the outs. Forgive me, I don't remember the testing on the outs, so I'll have to get with Matt on that. But to test these to see if there's 24 vol volts going through the system. Again, I need to be above the 24, which my next setting is 200. The five amp is the one that you skip. And again, forgive me, I forget why, but Let's see if this is like it's supposed to. You touch the negative here with your negative. You come over here to your first one and you see I'm getting 25.6. That means that charger is shooting 20, 24 volts through the system. I'm gonna skip number five, come to the next one. No, I was wrong. It's the middle one, I think. See, there's a 12 volt. There's 24, 25. And there's another 25. So it's this middle one here. I think it was the reverse. And I'm almost scared to do this. Where it's here and you go... Yeah, actually, I don't even want to do this. I can't remember what was what. This middle one was a reverse scenario. I can't remember if you touch this other negative over here or if you touch the positive, and I don't want to mess nothing up, so I'm not going to go there. But as you've seen, all the power was coming through, going through here. It was 24, 12, nothing, 24, 24, or 25. So that's another way to test the charger while the machine is on that you're getting volts through the system and you can do that while it's plugged in as well because it'll show that it's still pushing through the batteries through the system um, beyond that um, putting your panel back on for to cover this up can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Because if you see it inside here, there's a double lip, which that double lip has to slide against here and fit over this. 
and sometimes it can be a pain. So normally, oh, your wiring grid is on the back of it too, by the way. So if you just slide this down and keep this sidewall aligned and pushed up against the inside of here, everything should, see my two little tips right here is going on this inside wall, should just slide right down and loop right over it. And then there's two screws, one here and one here. We've been seeing this a lot. I'm sure we'll always see this a lot. Please, please put everything back. Don't just put one screw in. When you're working on electric carts, put everything back together again, please. We're running into controllers not being fastened, chargers not being fastened. It's missing screws here and there. For God's sakes, go buy it. Put it in. Whatever you got to do. Put everything back the way it's supposed to be. Beyond that, if you don't have a manual, most of these machines are supposed to have manuals sitting inside here. This store, obviously, has got it inside. Um, you can always revert back to the manual to help you out. Because not always, and especially Matt, you can't call all the time and expect an answer. These, these machines are very finicky. You're going to have to take the time. And yeah, you're going to have multiple stores a day. Well, you know what? We'll move them. Just take your time. Process, eliminate the stuff. None of us are electricians. We all got to learn. And you're not always going to get that answer. So you're going to have to take that time and, and, and do what you got to do to make it happen. Um, beyond that, I don't know, I guess, uh, if you need anything, just call me or Will, and we'll figure it out.